Welcome everyone to, to this briefing organized by the NGO Coalition for the International Criminal Court. Uh, my name is Cecilia Nilsson Kleffner. I'm, I'm the head of the, the Office of the Coalition uh, in The Hague. Um, the, um, the resumed eighth session of the Assembly of States Parties to the Rome Statute of the ICC is taking place this week here at the UN headquarters. ICC member, st member states are gathering together with non-states parties and NGOs to finalize preparations for the first ever review conference of the Rome Statute, which will be held in Kampala, Uganda, from the 31st of May to the 11th of June this year. The Coalition for the ICC will participate actively in the debates in this week's meeting and, of course, in the upcom upcoming meeting in Kampala. The CSCC, as many of you know, is a global network of civil society organizations currently in more than 150 countries advocating for a fair, effective and independent international criminal court and improved access to justice for victims worldwide of genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity. I'm very happy to be joined here today by David Donat Katin, who's the Director of International Law and Human Rights Program of Parliamentarians for Global Action, a founding and leading member of the coalition, and by Mohamed Defuna, who's the Director of Hurinet, a very important human rights organization based in, in Kampala, in Uganda, and of course, as PGAA, a steering committee member of the coalition. Before giving the floor to my very distinguished colleagues, I'd like to give a very short introduction. Why a review conference? Most treaties are indeed being reviewed after a few years after entry into force. Sometimes it's not a very big deal for an international organization and, and the review conference for such. But for the review conference, but the review conference for the International Criminal Court is indeed a, a big deal. It's significant for us and for, for the supporters of the court for very many reasons, and I will focus quickly on our three reasons before passing over the floor. The first would be the, the task that the conference has to enable the court to deal with the crime of aggression, the need for the states and uh, as well as non-states parties of civil society to reflect on the progress so, for, so far, an exercise which is referred to as the stock-taking exercise, and of course, sending signals of commitment to justice by the state's parties. Firstly, as I mentioned, uh, the states will discuss how to enable the court to deal with the crime of aggression. This is a discussion that involves difficult legal issues, political challenges that have been debated for many decades. The debate does not only involve state's parties, but also non-states parties and, and, and members of the Security Council of the United Nations, such as the United States, China, and Russia. It relates to the role of the Security Council vis-a-vis -vis the court. It relates to the independence of the court. It relates to universality of the statute. And of course, the most important thing, the legal determination of what actually constitutes a crime of aggression. And my colleague David will address this issue further in our discussion today. Secondly, the so-called stock-taking exercise in Kampala will show that the International Criminal Court has had an impact already. While we we'll still have very far to go uh, in terms of achieving justice for all, the conference will show that the ICC is not just a bureaucracy in The Hague, but a real forum for victims to be heard. It will show that, very man, that many crimes that would have gone unpunished without the Rome Statute are now being investigated and prosecuted. It will show that potential perpetrators do think twice before breaking the law. The task is, of course, and we recognize that, far from completed. Impunity is still wide, too widespread. But the review conference will show that the founding treaty of the International Criminal Court has really set a new trend. 
Stock taking will not, of course, only take place by state parties, as I've mentioned. The civil society will play an important role in this stock taking exercise. And my colleague Mohamed Difuna from Hurinet will give some examples of how civil society will be involved in this stock taking exercise. Thirdly, and this is my last point before passing on the floor to, to my colleagues, the review conference is very important because of the significance that this institution has for the international legal order, for international peace and security. I think it's not a surprise to any of you that the court has faced many political challenges in, in its first years. And it, that is, of course, due to its unique mandate to address the most serious crimes. But the court has survived these challenges, and it will survive many other challenges. And, and it is important, therefore, the review conference in end of May in Kampala will serve as an important reminder of the law that was agreed to by, by, by uh, the states participating in the Rome Conference in 1998. And it will give states an opportunity to send the signal to the rest of the world that they remain committed at the highest level. And that, that commitment is regards to the support to the court, but even more importantly, the commitment to fulfill their legal obligation to investigate and prosecute all acts of genocide, crimes against humanity, and, and war on crimes.